set. I'm going to call this study session for commercial facilities tax exempt districts to order at um, 6.30. If everyone would please rise where you're at for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Carrie, if we could have roll call, please. Certainly. Council Persons Dupre? Here. Higgins? Here. Kelsey? Here. Ross? Here. Salcedo? President Tobin here and Mayor Cox here. Okay, as we mentioned, that this is a study session for commercial vehicles tax exemption uh, districts, and we have our city assessor here, Rob Brazell. So, Bob, um, you want to kick it off? Sure. It's all um, yours, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Everybody can hear me. <laughs> and uh, see me and etc. Did everybody get their packet? Yes. Yes. Okay. I am not going to read the packet. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing. Um, commercial facilities exemptions are just another tool in the toolbox that we've never used. Um, a lot of communities wind up being one of them makes a lot of use of it. Um, they've done an exceptionally good job. Places like Celine, they have really big ones too. Um, for us, it's kind of an annoying thing because it means we have to create another assessment role. There's a lot of extra work, but it is good for larger developments. It does act as a draw if a company is willing to invest a substantial amount of money. What it doesn't work for is really small investments for, for mom and pops. Um, there's other tools for those. For this, this is a very specific thing for larger developments. As you saw in the packet, there were two that I included that I've worked on. One was an Imagine Theater, um, which they restored a very old, funky theater in Saline, and now it's just an amazing place where you can go in and put in your dinner order, put in your drinks order, and they deliver to your seat. Um, and that was their own idea. That was not something that, that somebody else came up with. The other one is the downtown block. They put three restaurants and a bakery in what was an abandoned building, and then they redid all of the lofts up above to very high-end residences. Um, this is the kind of stuff we want to use this for. And these projects were developed by the taxpayers. The, the city just sat down and said, okay, what kind of things will we allow? And they, they have a, a really, really big range of things that they allow. Um, so that's what we're looking at. We're looking at trying to make it possible for people who are going to do bigger projects to get a tax break. Um, what is not included in this packet is you can do the same thing for industrials. I believe in the past we've had IFTs, um, but right now we're, we're more worried about commercial. And the packet kind of goes in detail what can happen and what should happen. And the first thing that has to be developed are the districts. And because city council is truly in charge of this, this is your choice. You can either do them as individual development sites. Um, say somebody wanted to redevelop Lincoln Park Plaza. You could do that site. Um, in order to do that, you'd have to have a survey of the site um, and go through all the details in order to create a district. There's a public meeting. There's a lot of work. 
Um, and I've seen it both ways. Celine does it, Celine does it individually. Um, places like the city of Highland Park did the entire city. They, uh, they chose to just create the district within the city. And it's kind of a neat system in that they already had their public hearing. So if, if somebody comes in with a development that the city council chooses to, to go with, they can. Um, it's, like I said, this is another tool for the toolbox. And this is one that the city truly controls. It's not like an Oprah. It's, it's more of a front end load. If you choose to go with these, um, as I said, the assessor's office would have to create a new role. And we would be required to visit on an annual basis to make sure that they're maintaining the things that they promised to do. They have a 10% window on each side. So if they say we're going to spend 10 million bucks on whatever it is they're doing and they spend four, well, you have the right to take that away. Um, conversely, if they spend 25, again, they were exempted for 10. So, you know, that's why we have to do our annual visit. This does not include personal property. This is real property only, and it doesn't include the land. The, the projects are as varied as you or the taxpayers can think of. There's a lot of great things about them. Um, there's just a lot of, on our end, a lot of bookkeeping. Um, and just to reiterate, yeah, we don't want to do this for the mom and pops. Um, there's other tools that we have to work with them. And, you know, that's, that's Carl's bailiwick. Um, this is just something that the assessor's offices use in specific communities for specific reasons. And I think for us, as a lure, I think it's a really good thing. Um, you guys, because you have the packet, I'm not going to read everything in here. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly because you guys would all be asleep and it'd be me and Katie staring at the screen going, where'd they go? Um, do you have any specific questions? I do. Go ahead. Thank you. So, Bob, if we did something like this, does everybody get put into the same box? Like, they, they, they would get approved for the same benefits? No? The... The benefits that they get, that's part of the law. You know, they, they get a certain tax break for a certain amount of time, up to a maximum of 12 years. Again, that's the city council deciding on the length of time. For and each project. For each project. Is it can you, be done? Yes, for each okay. project, you do the approval. Okay. And so, my other question would be, I know that you said that um, the land and personal property would not be exempt. Correct. So, so we would still be getting some some tax base off of that. What right. what what other benefit other than to entice a, a project is there? Um, jobs. Um, that kind of revenue into the city, um, and we get the frozen value. You know, there's a, there's a frozen value portion of this, and then you get an improved value, and it's it, they're taxed at different rates, so the, the treasurer would not be real happy with me, but <laughs> because it's a separate role, it, it's very easy to calculate on their end. But yeah, we don't lose everything, um, and what it is, this is a great tool that we can use, or you could use, um, to essentially go, hey, you know, we're willing to do this. And, you know, as long as you're willing to put, to deal with your end, we'll deal with our end. 
Okay. So Bob, the the lawn itself is already in place, right? There's nothing yes. that we would have to do. They're saying that someone could come to us with this proposal for, say, the Penny's Plaza, as I call it, and then we would have to go through and do a public hearing and, and go through all the steps for that. But are you suggesting right. that we may want to create the, the zones ahead of time um, and designate certain areas that we would entertain this and then have that be known to people? Yes, um, because on our end, we, when we create the district, we have to deal with surveys and we have to deal with all, all of the other stuff just to create the district. It's a time consuming process and there's a short window every year for this because from tax day until October 31st, and that's, you know, that's the time they've got to, you know, to put together a project, come in for you guys to approve it. And it's, if you're gonna have to go through that whole process of creating a district, having a public hearing, um, that pushes that envelope really close to that October deadline. Okay, is, um, so, and accompanying with this and the, the work that you've done to present this today, do you have ideas of what you would uh, recommend for districts or are you just bringing the idea um, forward to us to get us moving on it? Um, I'd like to see a test district with the Sears and with um, Penny's. Yeah, that's how, what I call it. I mean, Fort Nemes yeah. Plaza. Yeah. But um, those those are our two biggest pieces of real estate, and it'd be really nice to have somebody come in that has deep pockets but wants this tax break, and says, you know, I'm willing to put in X amount of money, but you know, I want something back from the city. Essentially, it's an investment, and carrot. <laughs> Why would you suggest the? You know, outer drive the old Lynn Hospital <coughs> property, and that would be another one we might want to consider. Sure. Yeah, this is truly you guys. You know, I'm just the person that, that pushes the paper around. You guys make these decisions. And that's the other part of this that I like in that I don't make the choice. You guys make the choice. So all I do is push around the ideas. Um, and I'll tell you, it's you have to look at this in a couple different ways. Um, you put together, you know, your package for them, and you put to put in a hold harmless and a clawback clause, just so that the city, you know, if they have, to, if the city has to invest something, they're not out it. But failing in this on one of these is not a bad thing. It's a huge learning process, and you know, you're not out anything. With a good clawback clause and hold harmless agreement, you know you've tried, you've made the, you know you've made the effort, and okay, what a good thing. Do we go yes, sir. yes, just one one sec, uh, Bob. When doing this, what's the process? Uh, the process is they're going to come to you and they're going to ask for an application, and we will have application packets set up for them. And then they're going to come in and give a presentation to the city, to the city council. And from there on, we'll guide them through these steps. Um, it's not an onerous process, but there is an, uh, a, an application. They have to meet our cost-benefit analysis sheets um, that you've all seen. And so the, you know, but they'll have... But if we're talking about a preemptive strike, I mean, meaning that, that we designate the both of the plazas and then maybe that section of Outer Drive as as um, one of these areas, is that something that we can do on our own without waiting for the um, a business to make an application? It certainly is. You uh, And we can go through in detail what needs to happen. What we really need is a survey for each of these. And, you know, I, I think our engineers are more than capable of doing that. These aren't that complicated. And you preset them up. You have your public hearings beforehand. You do all of the, the basic legwork. 
and it's in place. And what that is, is essentially doing is that's letting everybody know, hey, we're open for business. We're willing to do this. And okay, uh, Councilman Tobin, you had you had something? Oh, if this was something that we went ahead and did, would there be something that we would advertise or um, send out feelers? Or is this oh, something we would, we would wait for them to come to us for? They'll they'll know <laughs> because it's a, it's a public hearing, so it'll get out in the market that way. And developers wait for this kind of stuff. Um, they know what's available and what breaks are there. And what we've got, and we're really lucky to have it, is we're sitting on top of three freeways. I mean, Southfield turns into one. You've got 75 and you got 94 there. And that's a huge draw. Um, the other thing I had is, I believe in the back of it, it says, is it expiring on December 31st, 25? 25? Well, uh, it, yeah, it's been expiring. Days. It's been expiring for a long time. Okay, so um, this is we only have a three-year window, or do you think no, like an extension? I would expect an extension. I think it would be the fifth extension. Oh. Um, they they want it to go away. They want it to go away, and then they don't want it to go away because, oh, say, City of Detroit has this big project, and that's one of the reasons that they keep bringing it back. The city of Detroit did, um, uh, I can't think of the name of the computer company that built that really, really big building downtown. Um, CompuWare. CompuWare. Yep. And uh, that was one of these. And holy cow, it revitalized the whole program. And then Livonia's got some uh, Novi Grand Rapids Thank you. You're welcome. Bob, how is this, uh, I mean, it sounds similar to me to be a brownfield development sort of sort of deal with the, with the basics. Um, uh, most of these development agreements are like that. Um, they have the same basics. But this is not looking for, you know, blighted property. You know, this can be new construction. This can be rehab. There, you know, there's a lot of different options. The, the two examples I gave are just ones that I just worked with. So, but it, it, so it doesn't have to be a new um, a new tenant. It could be the, the current property owners that could enter into that type of agreement also, then, right? Sure. Yes. Okay. Anyone else for, uh, for our assessor? <coughs> uh, Council and Dupre, I've heard you first. I, I guess, and, and this might be a very simple answer, I'm hoping, but when we say it's real property and doesn't include the land, how can we specify the, which land that we can do this with? Um, the, the land is not included in the project, so whatever happens to be sitting under where they're going to put a building is not exempt. Okay. So it's, it's just what we call real property, um, which is improvements over and above the land. Okay. So, but we can still choose the areas, like you Correct. said. Oh, okay. Thank you, Bob. Yep. Councilman Higgins, go ahead. Um, I, I had my answer sort of a answered earlier, but I want to I be very clear. So we can set out notices once we set up our zones to, say, current owners of the property and say, you know, we're willing to do this now. Um, and then if they have a buyer themselves, they could spread the word. Absolutely. That's kind of how it works. And you you better believe Saratage and Grand Saqua know how this process works. Yeah. That, that, that right there is what I wanted to know. I want to tell you, Ryan. Council President, go ahead, sir. Thank you. Hey, Bob, nice seeing you. I'm going to give a hypothetical, and maybe the citizens can maybe get a better understanding, and particularly myself. Say I'm a big business guy, right? I have a distribution center. I want to move into the Sears Plaza. I'm going to come to the city and say, look, I'm going to spend $9 million. Can you give me a break if I uh, put this distribution center up? How does that work? They're going to have to do a presentation to you 
and they're going to have to convince you as the city council. Um, and I've seen this done multiple ways. Generally, it's a great dog and pony show. You get lots and lots and lots of information. They make lots of promises. Then you hand them the applications and say, okay, let's see about moving forward or no, we're really not interested in whatever this is. Um, that's your choice. All right, so what I'm getting at is I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm going to spend $8 million, but what, what's the city going to do for me? Do I get these breaks automatically? Wouldn't that be the process anyway? Well, it's not automatic. The city has to approve it. Yeah, but why would the city deny a $9 million project? That's my whole point here. What? Um, It could be projects that you're not interested in. It could be something that's just so heinous to you know your sensibilities that you don't want it. Um, they want to move Larry Flint's club from over on Papalus because they don't want to be on the drug street. They want to put it, you know, over in uh, Lincoln Park Plaza. Um, well, I, that's obvious. I was talking about like a distribution type center or a movie theater. So, would that would you want the city offer the same incentive regardless of this? I guess my bottom line question. No. Now, it again, it's. You have certain parameters you can work within. You can give them, you know, it's going to take us, you know, two years to build this thing. And, you know, we've got to get our, our money out of it. So we'd like a 12-year extent, you know, we'd like 12 years. Or if it's somebody rehabbing their building, and it's going to take them a year to fix it, and they've got a minor amount of, of money that they're going to spend, you can give them four years or five years. So... That's that's the difference in, in extent. All right, thank you. You're welcome. It's another tool in the tool belt, basically, of things that we can yeah. offer. Yeah. Yeah. To the chair, if I may. Yes, sir, go ahead. Some good stories and some horror stories how these things work. I know down at Detroit, the, the Little Caesars tried to do it. They made some commitments, and they didn't follow through. What's the, how do we keep them to their commitment when they come in front of the council and say, I'm going to do this, and then they write up their proposal and they put in there, I'm going to do this by this date, and I'm going to do this by this date, and then we front load the tax break for X amount of years. How do we ensure that they're going to do it? What response can we have if they don't do it, if they renege on their promises, so to speak? Okay, you've got several tools. One, you're going to build in to this application, a clawback clause and a hold harmless agreement. So anything that the city pull, puts out, they're going to have to pay back, and that's that's vital because you know you want to talk about you know oopses. Yeah. Um, poor Van Buren Township told the equalization director, and I nah, Vistian's a great corporate citizen. They won't ever do anything bad. Well, Vistian went bankrupt. And they left all of the improvements to Van Buren Township who didn't have those agreements in place. That's tool one. Because if you have them, they're very powerful tools. Two, you take it away. And you put it on for the whole shooting match. Okay, and my last question is, basically the incentive is if you're throwing out there what we're talking about, a year and a half, capitalist, for lack of a better word, trying to maneuver to get in there to get their best deal. Am I correct? In other words, you might have, in essence, a bidding war because they're going to be the ones that want to play ball and they're going to sweeten the pot or, if you want to call it, make the pot a little bit better than the other guy only because they want to get in there and get those tax breaks because it's it's better for them and it's, it's something they want to do. Is correct. That, okay. All right. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay, sir, is there anyone, anyone else? So, Bob, what is, um, what would be the next step for us? You mentioned surveys, but were we to um, decide, it sounds like there is, is some interest, um, but without making, making a commitment, what would uh, be the next step for you to meet with Tennessee and the city manager and... Um, make recommendations towards districts or do we wait for somebody to uh, submit no i think a meeting with hennessy and and the city manager 
you know, we can designate the districts. We can kind of push where we want the development to go. And that's, that's another, again, tool in your tool belt. You know, you can decide where you want these things to be. And if somebody comes in with, you know, I want to take, you know, whatever, and completely redevelop them. Okay, well, they can propose that too. But at that point, they'd have to do this, you know, we'd have to do the surveys, create a different district, as opposed to, you know, the three or four districts or whatever you guys choose to have in place. And, you know, I'm sure between James and, and Hennessy and myself and whoever else is involved, we can come up with neighborhoods to make this work. I would um, have uh, our DDA, EDC uh, director be a part of that also so sure. that everything remains consistent if we're talking about development and such. And then with the idea behind uh, the group then making recommendations is that we are not um, making a commitment right now, we're not making a decision, then the decisions will be made once your presentation is made to council, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, this was just informational. Mr. the chair? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Is this something you think is going to take about ten, uh, two years to get all together and up and running to be offered? Uh, three or four months. Three or four months. Okay. Now, I, it, the big hit for us is because, you know, it's tax time right now, um, and we're coming up on tax day, so we're going to be kind of busy. But, you know, for the most part, where we want to develop this is pretty clear cut. Um, but again, taxpayers have a way of coming up with these great ideas that I wouldn't have thought of. Um, so if they come come to you with something that you know we can act on that too part of the joy of this if we preload is we can we can move real quick once these things are in place thank you you're welcome oh, one last thing you're asking go ahead, go ahead. Um, you know, and i read this back and it's a very in detailed so if a business came to us anyway and wanted to put a coin shop on Southfield Road, and isn't the city going to welcome him anyway and say, yes, whatever you need to do, let's do it. So I'm still trying to figure if, if businesses are coming currently asking our city we want to move in, is there like a snag right now that's preventing that? Um, these, like I said, these projects are designed for bigger projects. Um, Somebody investing $150,000 in a business is a great thing. But the cost of us running a CFT through that is pretty high. And they're not going to meet the cost-benefit analysis. There's not going to be enough jobs and output from their side for us to deal with this. There's other tools for that, and that's Carl's bailiwick. You know, he can find those kind of resources. This is this is bigger. All right. Thank you very much. So this will, this will make us um, competitive with uh, if you have somebody that's looking to come in and do some type of uh, development, whatever whatever it is, and they have their choice of several different locations. This may put us uh, higher on the list for uh, for their place to go. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Me too. Okay. Is there any chair, my lady, before we end the meeting? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Bob, two questions, uh, or two comments, I guess. Would it be better to just do the whole city as a district, and then we can pick and choose where we're at, and then get the public input, and then that way we don't have to come back and, and go through the process? Would that be more viable than picking the individual places? Because basically, if something else comes up, we're already, we've done our homework, so to speak, or no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if it were me, it's not like Lincoln Park is, you know, the city of Detroit where you've got, you know, 100, 100 square miles. You know, it's easy to do the district as the city. And, you know, again, you're preloaded then. You know, you can, you can deal with stuff quickly as opposed to, you know, going through the, you know, and now we're having another public hearing and... The other, the other comment I got is 
when you look at some of these, and I think you showed some of them about the jobs, uh, I remember Detroit, when they did the thing with all the different projects they had, they had a, a request that the employer look at the local people and give them a, an opportunity to apply for the jobs you know, within that industry or within that operation. Is that still viable or is that something that's not viable? Um, that's an attorney thing. Okay. That's, that's not an assessor thing. Okay. You answered my question. Thank you. I'm all set. And if I may, um, real quick on that, oftentimes that becomes dictated through a uh, community's community benefit ordinance if they have one. Okay. Thank you. Okay, James, since you um, came on, what is your um, feelings on this whole project? I think it's something that's very useful. Um, I know I've, I've used them in the past, um, and smaller than, than this, but it was a much smaller community. Um, I think they can absolutely be useful. They have to be done well. They have to be done right. Um, but the, the, the biggest biggest difference, I think, from kind of presetting a couple districts and the, versus moving towards just setting the whole city as a, as a district is it would, would reduce some of the public input. Um, if, if, you had to re, if you had to do one for each, each time, Right, if you had to set a district each time you did this, you'd have to have a second public hearing, um, as opposed to doing citywide one public hearing and then only one public hearing on each application. So that I, I think it's something good. I think it, just because we set a district doesn't mean we have to even use it. Um, it's just another tool we can can have to try and recruit. And at this point, we need to need to look outside of what we've done in the past. We need to be trying to move forward. I agree that we we do need to do something something different. We have, um, as I mentioned, the, the three freeways that are right right there. We're prime locations. Uh, we just need an additional push to um, to make things happen. So, Bob, is it the, your recommendation as you put this forward that that you'd like to see it uh, as citywide, or is that something you don't have an opinion on? Um. I like citywide just because I like to be able to respond quickly. Because um, sometimes it's a matter of time. You know, some of these companies want to move now, 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 now. And it'd be really nice to be able to go, okay, you know, you, you know, get your packet to us. So it'd be, a way for, it'd be a way for us to prep for success, then, is how I'm yes. thinking about it. Okay. Hey, the chair? Yes, sir, go ahead. Um, I just like that. In the opinion of uh, doing the entire city, we've got a couple of blocks where the entire block is not being used. Um, it'd be not, you know, the, and a big project could come come in and swallow up the whole block, and that would be, you know, they may want to come in and buy all the buildings at once and build right there and redo. And I, so I think we should do the whole city. That would be my just putting my thought into it. Yeah, I'd say the start the process with the with the meetings and. And bring it, bring it back to us. But I would say, just on, with a straw thing, that I'd be look favorable on a citywide approach. So, Your Honor, can I ask a question? Sure, that's what we're here for. Do you rem do you happen to remember? Have we ever used this before in the past? Not to my knowledge. Okay. I was just yep. curious because I know I haven't seen anything since I've been on council, so I was just curious. There's been brownfields and a couple other things, but not that. Yeah, don't I don't believe we've ever used a commercial facilities of okay. tax exemption, but I know we've done industrial ones. Correct. Yep. So, well, then can I ask in the, on the industrial one, was it successful? I'm assuming that it was. Yeah. That business is still there? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah, and that's again another tool. Um, that speaking as the assessor, I like IFTs a lot better than these because they're a lot easier to deal with. Um, but these are all tools, and we've got to start, you know, thinking maybe outside the box because the box is not helping us. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
I noticed our DDA and EDC directors join us. Um, Carl, had you looked over the, the packet that our assessors put out? And if you have any comments in reference to um, what we're considering or what we're studying here? Yeah, I, you know, I think Bob is correct. It's a tool in the toolkit that we have. Uh, we haven't used many of those tools. Um, this would be very useful to attract businesses to fill our vacant spaces. And uh, I don't know, there could be some nuance from project to project, but in general, I would say it's a worthy endeavor and it would, uh, it would definitely help. Um, I will just point out that in a previous life when I worked in uh, southern Indiana, in New Albany, Indiana, we used um, tax abatement, as it was called there. Uh, functionally, it's the same thing. But it um, was a very successful program. And, uh, you know, it resulted in investments, job creation, stability. Uh, it was all, you know, it checked all the boxes. A very worthy tool. Okay, we, we volunteered you to, to uh, be a part of the team to bring this forward with the uh, yeah. assessor and the city manager and our engineering group, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine with me. It would be my pleasure. Um, I apologize for getting on this workshop late. I was busy with an application uh, for some funding for that outdoor fitness court that we will be talking about later tonight. Okay. So is there anything anything else for, um, for the assessor or for this uh, program? <laughs> Hearing none, then... Um, there being no further discussion, the study session is adjourned at 7.07. And the regular meeting will begin in 23 minutes. And again, like usual.